Hi. So the title of this talk might be jQuery Mobile, what's new in 1.5 and the road to 2.0. But over the last few weeks, both some of our plans and the focus of our upcoming release have changed. When I wrote the abstract for this talk, our focus for 1.5 was going to be a focus on navigation and reviewing our navigation API, along with continuing some of the work that we started in 1.4, uh, reviewing our widgets and cleaning up some old code. But this work has shifted now to be more focused on our merge with the jQuery UI project. Uh, we'll still be doing some of the work that we were planning for 1.5, but the story of 1.5 and how we got here has changed. Uh, a little bit about who I am. Uh, I'm a programmer and web designer and developer from Portland, Maine, uh, where I live with my wife and 18-month-old son. Uh, I came to the jQuery Foundation about two years ago. I was invite, lucky enough to be invited to the jQuery Developer Summit in Washington, D.C., uh, where I was approached by the jQuery Mobile Project Lead at the time, Todd Parker, about joining the team. And uh, from there, it was actually quite a whirlwind ride. Uh, two weeks later, I was in South Korea giving a talk on jQuery Mobile. Uh, within a month, I had commit access. And less than a year later, I became the development lead of jQuery Mobile. And uh, most recently, I became the project lead in July. Uh, professionally, I actually think I'm one of the luckiest people out there because I get to work and spend all my time with the wonderful people of the jQuery Foundation. These are just some of the people I'm lucky enough to spend my time working with. I basically have my dream job. I'm able to spend all my time working on wonderful open source projects that I truly believe in. Uh, the majority of my time I spend working on jQuery Mobile, of course, and also jQuery UI. One of the main focuses of my work since I began working with the jQuery Foundation in 2012 has been the interoperability between jQuery Mobile and jQuery UI. This was important to me when I came into the project because I came from a strong background using jQuery UI. Uh, and while I really liked jQuery Mobile and some of the things that it did for making apps, I felt that there was pieces missing that jQuery UI already had. And I personally believe in modular, reusable code, so it didn't make any sense to me to have the same code in two different repositories. Uh, before I go any further, though, uh, just a little bit about the slides that you're seeing here. Uh, you can view this presentation and actually see some extra content, links to some things in here. If you go to either of the links here, and if you click the follow along button down in the bottom corner, uh, your slides will stay in sync with what's on the screen. Uh, simply uncheck it at any time if you want to spend more time on that slide reading anything, and when you recheck, whenever I change slides, it'll catch right back up. Uh, you can, the entire slide deck was built using jQuery Mobile, uh, the current stable version, and the code is available on GitHub. Uh, so raise your hands if you've ever seen a live demo at a conference or a meetup or anything like that, and something went wrong and it failed. Yeah, it, it's, it happens a lot. Um, I've seen a lot of them attempted, and far too often they turn into a bad idea only moments in. Um, I bet there's more than a few of you here that have even seen the hiccups at like WWDC where they spend millions of dollars preparing, and yet it still never seems to go off completely flawless. Fate just always seems to have a way of throwing a wrench in the works. Uh, but at the same time, live demos are really exciting, and they're really important for some talks. So back in February, I decided to try a live demo for the first time at jQuery San Diego. I knew it was probably a bad idea. I knew it would probably fail. But I decided to go with it anyway with the urging of my wonderful fellow mobile team members. And I took the stage, a little nervous about it, but about how the attempt would turn out. But I didn't have to wait long to find out how it was going to turn out. Pretty much instantly, this is what I felt like. Trouble cropped up, there was a permission error, thought to myself, well that's odd, it worked a few minutes ago. Decided to try again, maybe it was just a fluke. Maybe I typed something wrong, who knows. Permission denied flashed again on my screen and my heart about skipped a beat, but I knew I just had to continue on, kept going and everything turned out fine and actually with the help of my wonderful teammates that were in the audience, we did get the release done before my talk was over. So at the end, we got to show the nice blog post on the screen. So it almost worked. So a few weeks later, I was speaking again at jQuery Europe in Vienna, Austria. And we had enough 
stuff fixed that we wanted to do another patch release. So we're like, all right, let's try it again live on stage this time. But I was going to be the only person there this time. I didn't have any team members to back me up. So I took the stage, and this time it was a little bigger of a demo, though. Because that was when I, I debuted the slide deck that you see here now with the features following along and actually built it on jQuery Mobile. Because when I was in San Diego, I was using a custom uh, just keynote theme, using keynote for my slides. That, and the theme was made to look like jQuery Mobile. But several people from the audience approached me asking about it, and when I told them it was actually just Keynote, they were very disappointed that I hadn't actually done it with jQuery Mobile, because it has a lot of the things built in that you need for a basic slide deck. So over the next week, I, which is only a week in between the two, I actually rebuilt the entire slide deck from scratch with the follow along feature and some of the other things that you can see here. And so I was not only going to attempt a live release, but act debuting this new deck. So the night before, I prepared. I made sure everything was smooth. I'd learned some lessons. I was trying to do the release on my server instead of local so Wi-Fi wouldn't matter. And there was one thing I couldn't count on, though. Even 2 AM the night before, everything passes. 10 AM the next morning, there was one thing I couldn't count on, which was NPM making the change to not allow self-signed certificates anymore, which broke pretty much every NPM install in the world that day. And even their blog post, the instructions that they gave to fix it weren't actually right. <laughs> so needless to say, that release failed too. And it actually took us several hours to get that one figured out. So now it's another jQuery conference. We have another patch release ready. So I'm going to say, let's give it another shot. Or I was going to. <laughs> Just before I took the stage, we were testing. And we're having some crazy connectivity issues that we're being told are maybe due to a solar flare. Because um, we're using a remote server, so it's not the conference Wi-Fi, but we can't keep a steady connection to GitHub this morning. So there's not going to be a release right now. There was supposed to be. This is where I was going to go into the release, but it's just not going to happen. <laughs> so we'll keep going. So the quotes here are both from philosopher George Santayana. One of these you're likely all very familiar with. The other one is a little less known, but I believe both of these uh, apply well to the current situation. I added this slide with multiple meanings in mind, depending on how this release turned out, which we already know how that turned out. But, uh, so maybe it was going to mean that, it was, that I should stop doing live releases. Maybe I should just learn my lesson that this is a bad idea. Or maybe it was going to mean that I had actually figured it out and it was going to work this time. Well, well both of the, neither of those are actually true. The reason for this slide is that I think it reflects well on what we're trying to do with the ongoing merger between the jQuery UI and mobile projects. And moving forward, we hope to both learn from our past and use the opportunities that we have had to turn away from the familiar and experiment with new technologies to grow over the past few years, bring the collective knowledge gained from both projects uh, together as we move forward. But in the spirit of the more famous of these quotes, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Now I'll go into a little bit of a timeline history of how we got to where we are today. As you can see, 2012 was a milestone year for mobile development. Or 2010, I mean, sorry. <laughs> In 2010 was when the jQuery mobile project first started. It started with a blog post announcing the project and was quickly followed by the first commit within two months and an alpha release shortly after. jQuery Core 1.4 had just been released at the time which pushed the core library a big step forward, and jQuery UI 1.8 was released in March. Before the year was out, we'd see Android 2.3's release, and the Windows phones hit the market for the first time. Sadly, Windows Phone was basically, at the time, using IE8. It's easy to remember how quickly things, it's easy to remember how quickly things have changed in the years since uh, development first began on jQuery Mobile. The now much maligned Android 2.3 had not even been released when we did our first commits. iOS 4 was only two months old, and BlackBerry was still one of the biggest players in the mobile market, having just released BlackBerry 6. 2010 was a flurry of development for everyone, and it was from this rapidly changing environment that the jQuery mobile project was born. The results of the rapid paced development was that jQuery UI could not adapt quickly enough to be a solution for mobile widgets. 
jQuery UI at the time was built around mouse interaction and had a theme that was not well suited, we'll say, to the temperaments for mobile apps at the time. The current widget factory also lacked any type of extensibility for widgets to be even try to adapt these widgets to work for mobile. So you, the uh, widgets in code and UI just weren't something that was going to work for the jQuery mobile project at the time. Uh, the results of this were that jQuery mobiles, in, that from jQuery mobile's inception, jQuery mobile and UI teams worked in isolation from each other, basically. Uh, from there, each team shared, there was no shared code, and the only thing that was actually shared at all was the actual core library and the widget factory, which was literally just copied and pasted from repository to repository. Uh, in addition to this, we, used, we made a lot of different choices when we were starting out. Uh, we had different communication channels. We chose different issue trackers, different wikis. Uh, while other teams had meetings on IRC, the mobile team started off using Google Hangouts for weekly meetings. Other teams used Track for issues, while we used GitHub issues. Uh, UI used the PBWorks wiki, while we used GitHub wikis. There's nothing necessarily wrong with the choices of either team. They were just the choices that best suited our development practices at the time. 2010 continued the fast pace of change in the industry and within the jQuery family. In 2011 is when John Rezig, the creator of the jQuery mobile, or jQuery core library, I mean, uh, began to step back from active development within the jQuery projects as he began working for Khan Academy. Three new versions of jQuery core were released in 2011, leading up to the release of jQuery core 1.7 which featured a fast new event system and the on and off methods that we're all familiar with today. jQuery UI began a major API redesign after 1.8, and there was no major releases from jQuery UI in 2011. 2011 also saw the emergence of the tablet market. 2010 saw the first iPad. However, in 2011, we saw the iPad 2, which was the much longer-lived replacement of the original iPad, along with Android 3.0 designed for tablets and really the beginning of the Android tablet market. But that's not all that Google had in store for us in 2011. 2011 also marked the introduction of the Android 4.x line, which is the line that we're still seeing variations of today. Continuing with their yearly releases, we saw Apple release iOS 5, BlackBerry truly embraced touch for the first time with BlackBerry 7, and the Windows Phone 7.5 update brought us an updated browser for Windows Phone. In November, just over a year after its inception, jQuery Mobile 1.0 was released. Up until this time, many mobile browsers lacked basic functionality that we take for granted today. Uh, iOS 5 introduced fixed positioning for the first time. Before that, a true fixed header or footer, which is pretty standard in mobile applications, wasn't possible. Also, iOS had not achieved its amazing adoption rates that we see today, because iOS 5 was the first version to feature over-the-air updates. The mobile browser support of the day had a big impact on the beginnings of the jQuery mobile project. 2012 saw more milestones. Windows 8 introduced pointer events, the input event model that we believe is going to be the future of input events on the web. Android Jelly Bean also came out in 2012. This is still the version that we see with more than 50% of the an Android install base today. Within jQuery, 2012 was also a big year. It saw the formation of the jQuery Foundation and the release of two major versions of jQuery Mobile and perhaps most importantly for this talk, the release of jQuery UI 1.9. This featured an updated widget factory that included common methods for common widget functionality, and also the ability to extend widgets, which, as I'll talk about in a little while, became very important for jQuery mobile and UI. For mobile, in December of 2012, also marked the first meetings to talk about the concept of merging aspects <laughs> of the two projects. Uh, the meeting took place between Scott Gonzalez, the jQuery UI team lead, and myself. And we discussed what would be the first easy steps we could take to be able to share code. And we identified an easy path forward to be able to share a core between the two libraries. 2013 brought a measure of stability to the marketplace. BlackBerry, iOS, and Android each released one new version that year. And Windows Phone had no major updates. 
2013 brought jQuery Core 1.9 and 2.0 and jQuery UI 1.10, which continued the API updates from, from 1.9. The stability in the marketplace and the improvements in the prior year to the widget factory meant that more thought was able to be put into sharing code between the two libraries and how we could better serve the needs of, our, of developers in utilizing our resources and development efforts within the foundation. In the spring, it was decided that we should begin formally merging aspects of the two teams and, sorry. So in 1.4, which was released in December, this was our first attempt at actually sharing real code. We shared a common core, we shared in the UI tabs widget, and we had some improvements to how jQuery Mobile worked to be able to better interoperate with widgets from third party. Previously to 1.4, any widget that you wanted to use in jQuery Mobile and have it actually operate like a jQuery Mobile widget had to be specifically written for jQuery Mobile or it wouldn't work with data attributes for options and it wouldn't be able to be auto-initialized. In 1.4, we did a massive rewrite of how both of these worked so that now any widget that just is in a jQuery mobile page will automatically receive these uh, enhancements from mobile. 2014 so far has been a very slow year. We've seen a new version of jQuery core, the Windows Phone 8.1 update, and jQuery UI 1.11. But there's big things in store before the year is out for both the UI and mobile projects. So as you're well aware by now, there's a merger still ahead for, the J for jQuery UI and mobile. But what exactly does this mean? Is the mobile project gonna go away? Is the UI project gonna go away? What's happening to the repos? Will there be one? Will there be two? Are there gonna be separate teams? Is there gonna be one team? These are a lot of the questions I've been asked a lot since we started talking about the merger between the teams. And the more I've thought about it, I think that saying that we're merging is kind of a misnomer. We aren't gonna be completely merging into one team, we will be separate projects. So what exactly is the merger then, you might think? It's really gonna be more of a merger of resources, infrastructure, and uh, development practices. When we first began talking about the concept of a merger between the two teams, one of the first areas that we identified to be able to merge to help was communication. So the first step was that jQuery Mobile stopped using Basecamp. Previously we used Basecamp, which works well to manage projects, but it wasn't accessible to the other teams and it wasn't public publicly accessible. So we switched to keeping everything in GitHub for our wikis and planning, and we made sure that all of our meetings were on, J were on IRC where they're publicly logged. The next thing we standardized was actually sharing a communication, an IRC channel. Previously we had our own IRC channels, so we were very isolated from each other in our day-to-day -day work. So now we both share a single IRC channel so that everyone from both teams can see what's going on constantly and be able to give input and feedback. Infrastructure was the next area that we identified that we wanted to merge. In the beginning, there was essentially no shared infrastructure. Even though all three projects, Core, Mobile, and UI, needed basic things like a branch preview system, and consistent API documentation, and things like that. But at the time, each project had its own ways of doing these things. So the first place that we standardized for our infrastructure was our branch preview system. Since all th this wasn't something that was needed by all three projects, we needed a single solution that would be work in all three places. Our solution was something that we call View. This allows us, with a simple click, to view any branch or tag which exists on GitHub, and it's updated on a cron job every five minutes. This is really important for just being able to send someone a bug fix test to easily be able to load up, uh, test demos, review branches. It's a really nice feature when you have a distributed team. And it's now consistent across all of our projects. The next place we standardized across projects was the API documentation. Originally, the jQuery mobile documentation was a mixed app, which was a, demonstrate, which was a demo app, it was our demos, and it was our API documentation. 
which kind of muddled things together in a way that sometimes made it hard to find the information you were looking for. Originally, UI had, had, a web, had their regular website mixed with their demos and API documentation, which suffered from the same problem, whereas Core actually had distinct API documentation. So we created a common shared API format and website for each of the projects, which you can now see is consistent across mobile and UI, as well as core. The next thing we standardized on was a build, was a build and module system. We decided to go with AMD and require JS for our build system. This really shined when we start having to pull components between the two libraries to be able to share. And we've also now updated the UI download builder to use AMD as its build system so that we can now share in future releases the same download builder with both the UI and mobile. Both projects also standardize on using Bower for our internal dependency management. The combination of the shared build system, the use of AMD, Bower, and required JS means that it's very simple to include files from one repository to another in an easy and manageable way. This will be increasingly important as we move forward with the projects and have an ever larger amount of shared code. Another standardization across projects was how we do our releases, which I was going to show with everyone today, but that's not going to happen. Um, we now use a common release script written in Node that's shared across all our projects that runs the entire release process, updates websites, publishes to the CDN, and takes care of all these common tasks for us. Our tooling is another area that we wanted to make sure that we were consistent on. All projects now use Grunt for a task runner. We use JS Hint and a shared setting set for our JavaScript code quality. We use CSS Lint and its shared settings for that as well. And soon we'll be adopting JSCS across all the projects for, making, for checking our code style. And we use, also use Commit Please for our commit message format checking so that all of these things are consistent across all our projects. Coding standards were another important area for cross-project issues that we wanted to address. To do this in a consistent way across all our projects, we can created the contribute site. Uh, Contribute.jQuery.com now has all of our settings for CSS Lint, settings for JS Hint, our full code style guide, our formatting for commit messages, everything you could need to know how to properly format code for contributing to the, any of the jQuery projects. Commits are another area that we wanted to clean up. Previously, the teams maintained their own commit history in different ways. While the mobile team was a fan of merge commits for merging in feature branches and bug fixes, other teams preferred to rebase and keep a clean linear history. Uh, so mobile has now adopted the rebase option so that we can have a clean linear history and make sure that no matter what on master, no matter what commit you check out, all tests will pass and everything will function. We also created, we also had previously a rough guide for how we formatted our commit messages and references, but it wasn't completely consistent across projects. And also, we had issues where, because some of us use track and some of us use GitHub, if we had to cross-reference an issue, it was unclear as to what you were actually referencing. So we also came up with a clear way to be able to reference issues across projects. Code review is another area that we wanted to standardize on. While all the projects always had some concept of code review, and it was done to an extent, it was somewhat lax on the jQuery mobile project. And this led to some of the older code having some quality issues. So to aid in this, and to also aid in the speedy review of community member PRs, we now have a full-time uh, team member that spends all of their time just working on jQuery mobile reviewing PRs, that which is myself. If anyone ever needs a PR, bug me. <laughs> uh, so now we can make sure that all, of our PR, that all of our code is properly reviewed before it actually lands and we can make sure that PRs are reviewed in a timely manner so that community members feel that their contributions actually matter. Our supported platforms in the beginning of the mobile project was as wide reaching as we could possibly make it. We attempted to support every device that existed, basically. 
And this was a great concept. We, had, we did feature testing. We could fall back to different levels of experience and even back to just a CSS-only experience, if necessary, on some devices where JavaScript support just wasn't good enough. And this worked good at first. However, we eventually ran into problems. For example, like with old Nokia feature phones, where even just basic support tests would actually crash the phone. So we couldn't even do a support test to try to fall back. So we realized that saying that we supported everything with fallbacks was unrealistic. Um, because jQuery Core, for example, doesn't actually test on old Nokia feature phones. So we don't know that they actually support it. If they don't test, we can't say it's supported. So we decided to standardize on what the actual officially supported platforms and browsers were across all of our projects so that everything that we claim to support is actually tested. Now, we still do our best to always fall back and create a usable experience where possible. However, we can't fully support platforms that the core library that we depend on doesn't fully support as well. So you may be asking at this point, well, what exactly is 2.0? Then what's going to happen there? 2.0 is where the merger between the UI projects and mobile project will be complete. Uh, it will be the realization of the goal that we started last spring of a combined resources and uh, development practices. We define this goal by three important milestones. First, we need a common theme that's based on responsive principles so that it will work well on desktop and mobile and is better suited to the sensibilities of today. Because I'm sure some of you would agree, even our team members agree, that the current jQuery UI theme is a little bit dated. So to do this, we want to create a standalone CSS framework. It won't be a part of jQuery UI or mobile, and it'll be a fully comprehensive standalone CSS framework. Uh, right now, we don't have concrete plans for this yet. Uh, we have been looking into collaboration with other existing frameworks to see what other groups would be willing to work with. And we're not even set on it being an actual jQuery Foundation project. We just want to be able to standardize on, some, on a basic way of markup and class structure that could be shared potentially across multiple CSS frameworks, not just our own. That way you can have full interoperability so that you can not only use the jQuery UI theme, but you could maybe use Bootstrap or Topcode or Zurb, all without having to do anything the next milestone for the merger is mobile support on UI. To make this possible, we had to rethink how to handle input. Currently, jQuery UI is built around the concept of mouse only. And mobile attempts to smooth this over with our vMouse so that we can normalize touch and mouse. However, now with pointer events, we've had a third one that we have to worry about in there. So the work to achieve this began in a branch that, in UI that we called Interactions, which was an abstraction on any sort of event model where you could plug it in and it, you just, it only cared about the positioning on the screen. However, after a while, we realized that this wasn't necessarily the correct approach. Over time, through work with Microsoft, we realized that the best approach was the pointer event spec. And to this end, we have been actively working with the pointer events working group to, and to bring pointer events into browsers and also to create a good and consistent polyfill that could be used for browsers that don't currently support pointer events. So the second milestone is pointer event support in both UI and mobile. In 2.0, all of the common code between the libraries will live in jQuery UI. In jQuery, the entirety of jQuery UI will become part of jQuery mobile jQuery Mobile will essentially become a layer on top that adds navigation, auto enhancement, page layout, all the things that you think of as being jQuery Mobile key features. So all these, so you, you can see here that in mobile, basically you'll just have layout widgets left, things like tables, panels, toolbars, whereas all of your like, form widgets and standalone widgets will be moving over to UI. We do, however, fully realize that there will be times that for a variety of reasons that out of the box there may be things that we just don't work 
for jQuery Mobile when we pull in the UI widget. And this is where the extensions introduced in jQuery UI 1.9 become important. We can easily just create extension points, methods that are easily overridden, so that we can add in the additional functionality that we need to make it work properly with the mobile framework. However, one thing that we will not be adding extensions for is to actually support mobile devices. jQuery UI will fully support mobile devices right out of the box after 2.0. Another aspect that we're looking into adding is responsive theme, so that you can create, so that we have not only a responsive theme, but responsive widgets. So right now we have a proof of concept of this in mobile, which is our responsive tables widget, which can reflow based on screen size, and it actually works really well, and we're hoping to add similar responsive widgets in the future. So at this point, you've heard me talk a lot about code moving to UI, and how all of UI will be pulled into mobile. From the table on the previous slide on widgets, you may see that there's not very many widgets left in mobile after we do this. So what we wanted to commit to with what mobile will be after is really what the layer on top that makes it easy to develop apps in a very quick and declarative manner. One of the key components for jQuery UI is support of single page navigation and history abstraction in apps. This will continue to be the core of jQuery Mobile. We will be adding support for multiple page containers to allow for tablet layouts where you can have multiple independently navigated panes and still have a sane history that's shared between them and refresh will work properly. We'll continue to support the history abstraction so that you don't have to care about hash change, pop state, or support for that either. We will abstract all of that for you. Continuing with the theme of navigation, we'll also be making it possible for you to easily tie navigation into widgets. Uh, right now on Android, it's really common to just hit the back button to exit out of anything. A pop-up, back button, exit out. No matter what, the back button just takes you back. That's not really common on all platforms, though. But it can be useful. So what we decided was we wanted to create a way to just add an simply add an attribute to a link, and it will know to call the open or close methods when you open that and then hit back button so that you can have history support within widgets for things like pop-ups and panels. Where on Android, it's gonna, it would be almost odd if it didn't have back button support. Also, we'll be continuing with our page transitions to give the truly app-like experience. We will continue to be separate teams. We'll hold separate meetings. And while we do hope to have more common team members in the future, right now we do have one common team member so that we can at least make sure that there's a line of communication always open between the teams and people that know what's going on in both projects to bring things up when they need to be. We'll also continue to maintain independent repositories as they will be independent projects still. We'll also continue to maintain our own issue trackers and our own wiki. So what's next? We recently came together and decided to make a big step to try to move the, pro the merger of the projects forward. In a few months, jQuery UI and mobile will release UI 1.12 and jQuery mobile 1.5. These releases feature key new features that will extend the theming functionality and make it possible for widgets to be used with any theme. This is something that we call the classes option. jQuery UI will be a huge step forward. The new classes option will be able to map a structural class to a theme class so that you can, with a simple defaults file, pull in whatever theme you wanted. You could use Bootstrap on all your jQuery UI widgets and it would work just fine. jQuery UI 1.12 will also feature rewritten form widgets for button, checkbox radio, and control group that were written specifically for both libraries, as well as a full effects rewrite. jQuery Mobile 1.5 will actually pull in the new button, checkbox, radio, and control group widgets from UI, so we'll now have a shared common set of widgets for the basic form controls. Well, that's our current plans for jQuery UI and mobile projects and how we got here and why. When the mobile project began in 2012, I don't think anyone would have expected the journey to turn out the way it did, but I think in the end it benefited both projects to diverge and then come back together and share our knowledge that we gained. Any questions? Oh, and 
thanks to my wonderful team members here again. I'm told that they did get the release out. So jQuery Mobile 144 is now live on the CDN. The blog post is up if anyone wants to go look.